Every day we have to make a ton of choices, from which clothes to wear to the office, which shoes to wear to match our purse, which person to follow back on Instagram or not, to take the bus to work on a busy day or take the car and risk staying in traffic, a lot of other choices at our projects at work, what should we eat for lunch or cook for dinner, where to go this weekend, and these are just the most mundane tasks we need to manage every day. What about more important choices to make for our future, which opportunities to take and so on. But the problem is not this, the problem is when we become mentally fatigued from all of this, that we cannot enjoy anything from what we are doing anymore, because we are always in a rush to check mark another task on our to-do list and we always feel like we don't have time for anything. We as society weren't ready for having everything at our disposal and we don't know how to manage our time. Basically, we don't have discipline and are constantly pulled in a million directions that we get lost from the path we came here to walk. At the supermarket, we have too many decisions to make. There are always appearing new products and new ingredients. In the city life, there are always new events, new festivals, new movies at the cinema or on Netflix, or even too many videos to watch on YouTube. And if you don't have a clear direction, we become vulnerable at what is offering to us, and in this way, we will always live the life others want us to. I feel you. That was me a few time ago and well, I am still struggling when I get too many demands, but I'm doing so much better since I've gone the essentialist path. Essentialism has been introduced by Greg McKeon in his book that I totally advise you to read. I have discovered it one day when I was having another mental breakdown because I had too many things to do. Even though I was disciplined and had drive, I mean that I wasn't wasting time or anything like that. And I was still feeling like I didn't have have any free time. I was in a period of my life in which I had to finish my diploma project for finishing studying architecture for six years that actually felt like a century. If you want to find out more of what I've been through, you can watch my other video of 10 qualities of a successful entrepreneur I learned studying architecture. I will link it at the end of this video so you can watch after this one. So yeah, I didn't have enough time to work on my dreams and my personal projects and art. And yeah, one day after having another mental breakdown and being stuck in traffic, I literally searched on YouTube like not having enough time. Yes, and then I found out a video on YouTube about essentialism and then I looked into it and I thought, hmm, yeah, this concept is very interesting. And then I read the book. Actually, I listened to it because I have a more developed auditory memory. And I really don't know why, because my visual intelligence is much higher than my musical one. Anyway, so after reading the book, I discovered that actually I was already implementing a lot of these tips in my life. But at that moment, I was way too busy. Architecture schools really know how to overwhelm people and make their life a living hell. But getting over my complaining personality, I can say that this book is essential in our today's modern world because we need to prioritize life and what we do in order to breathe and just enjoy life more and not rush every second wasting it on thinking on what you have to do next. As my short definition, essentialism is decluttering your life like you do for homes in trend minimalism. You need to know what you want then decide for every opportunity if it is according to your vision or it's just another noise bugging you and fogging your mind. And the end result is just you living quietly, enjoying every second you live, doing what you love and feeling like you have all the time in the world. But it is not that simple to get there. There is a lot of self-discipline and everyday practice to achieve this. I like how the author says in the book, the pursuit of less but better. And it actually means asking yourself before doing something if that thing is essential or not. It's about making the wisest investment in order to operate at our maximum level for that thing. And it doesn't mean doing it all, but instead to make exchanges and sacrifices in order to maximize our output for the most important tasks. I have identified eight simple principles of essentialism and easy to follow, but before I get into that, I want to share with you more about my journey on becoming essentialist. I have to admit that I haven't always been like this. 
few years ago before my spiritual growth journey I was very chaotic and undisciplined. I didn't know that no was a proper word and I was a bit of a people pleaser. I was saying yes to every opportunity or date even if I had to work or I was messaging with different people while working on projects. I just didn't have boundaries and I didn't know how to prioritize at all. And of course that I was ending up working late at night or even pulling an all-nighter because I went out the entire day. <laughs> and of course because of all of this I got a burnout period in which I obviously I was sick. I developed terrible physical anxiety that even now I haven't got rid of completely and I was too mentally fatigued that it took me like a few months to get better. And because of this breakdown, I had to make drastic changes. And then intuitively, I was adding boundaries into my life and I started my deep process of personal growth. But the actual switch to becoming an essentialist became after I participated in X Face Awards last year. I still have the videos on my channel, so please don't watch them. Yes, and in that period, I had a lot on my plate. A lot to do for my architecture projects and a lot to do for this contest as well. Because I had to learn everything in like 2-3 months, how to shoot, how to edit videos, YouTube SEO, how to do SFX molds and all of this shit. And yes, I can say that it wasn't a very healthy period for me. Yes, I wasn't in balance because these were the only things that I was doing, NYX and school. But what I can say is that it was a period in which I was gaining my power back, stepping out of my comfort zone and becoming very disciplined. And I have to say that I am very grateful for that period in my life because it got me started on this YouTube journey. And that level of self-discipline stayed with me even now that sometimes I'm just struggling to relax and just lay back a bit. <laughs> okay, and after that busy period, I really started to implement the principles of essentialism. Because after seeing what it's like to not have time for anything, it is so refreshing now to just be able to focus on what is important now. Okay, but enough with me now. Let's start on some actual real advice on how to become essentialist. Number one, know yourself. You really have to know yourself and first set your life vision so that you will know where you want to get and after knowing your destination, it will be much easier to get there because you know in which direction to move and you'll know for what to say no, which is everything that means our path than your own. This will help you to give up on what is not meaningful or toxic, bad habits and to let only what is essential for your own path. Yeah, I will make a video on this topic because I feel that there are a lot of people who are struggling to decide what they want so subscribe to be the first one who sees when i upload the video number two explore another tip is that before you start anything it's better to give yourself a period of exploration and analysis of opportunities in order to choose what is most valuable according to your time available the idea is to think more and do less if you don't make the decisions, well, someone else will make them for you. It's just like watching TV or listening to radio. You're on a program made by others instead of taking control over what you want to do. Number three, is this essential? One simple trick is to think from the beginning that you cannot do everything and that will set you to make some choices. You have to always ask yourself, is this essential? Is this essential now? And just make this your mantra. Tattoo it on yourself, whatever you want. But I assure you that it will help you immensely because after you finish that question, the answer will appear and you'll know what to do. It is that easy. I can say I am perfect at this, I still have to mastering it, but I can say that I am so much better than before. And after multiple burnouts, I can say that I became more vulnerable to stress and I can get overwhelmed easily. Which is good actually because it is like an alarm from my body that tells me, okay, you're doing too much, something is not right, you need to cut back from something. Number four, have self-discipline. It is a constant process of editing, rethinking, reprioritizing accordingly to our feedback. 
because we are humans and we change our mind. We think we want something, but instead we want something else. So that's why it is a dynamic process which is molding by our internal state and what makes us feel good. Because in the end, it is all about distressing ourselves and our life. We are too busy in general and stimulated with new information and opportunities that we simply cannot do it all. And it's normal that we feel stressed and anxious. This massive growth of information information has been done too fast that we weren't ready for it as society. Yes, we adapt, but not all can do this, especially people who are in unstable periods of their life. Like finishing college and not having a job, changing careers, starting a business or moving cities or all of them at the same time. And because of that, they can become more vulnerable if they don't focus on what is essential. We should have a daily discipline and choose what we want to do and not let others make decisions for ourselves. The anxiety that comes from the rush of trying to do it all, it's projected onto us by society, like through FOMO, the fear of missing out, or through social media or other. Basically, they are stealing our attention from what is truly essential, which is to live every moment to the fullest and do your thing relaxed. Even if you won't do as many things, at least the ones you'll do will be better enjoyed. Plus, it is really good when you decide for yourself how to live your life because it will take you out of the victim state and not feel powerless anymore. Number five, say the f No. <laughs> yes, it is important to have healthy boundaries and to not be a people pleaser. Oh yes, it feels so good to say no when you want to say no and say yes when you want to say yes. You don't have to feel bad if you say no to a request because you can help that person more if you let them solve their own problem. And I can say that this is true for other situations in life because people learn their best lessons from their mistakes. Number six, sleep. Yes, another thing is sleep. He talks about this in his book and it is very important to take care of our health. He talks about that many successful people prefer to sleep an hour more or take a nap to maximize their output. A lot of non-essentialists think that sleep it is not important and that it is a waste of time not making you productive at all. But it is further from the truth because the better you sleep, the more productive you will be in the end. After my period of burnout and mental breakdown, I had to make room for more sleep and recovery. But now, even though I am so much better, I still prefer to sleep more, actually just as much as my body needs. Even though I lose an hour or two, I know that I will do my best in the rest of the day. I can say that now I am addicted to feeling good and I just cannot stand a day in which I am foggy or I cannot focus better. You know, I'm curious, how many hours do you sleep at night? You can leave that in the comments if you like to. Number seven, create buffers and breaks. Why am I talking like this? Okay, a very useful trick is creating a buffer, as, as the author calls it. It is a period of break between activities used to recharge your batteries or to prevent problems that may slow you down or ruin your schedule, which in the end will cause a lot of stress. So in this way, you can prevent stress by giving an extra period of time for each task. It is a technique that I still struggle to implement because I so undervalue how much a task will take. And if I am right and I get more free time, I cannot use it as a resting period. I don't like to sit down and do nothing when I have so many beautiful things to do in this life. But instead, I approach it differently if it happens to delay my schedule. I say to myself that it is okay if I haven't done it all today, it means that I underappreciated how much it will take. And it is okay, I'll do it tomorrow. But I have to admit that breaks are a good part of the productivity strategy. Because when I have to work on a project, even if I enjoy it so much that I don't feel like taking breaks at all, I've seen that I feel much tired when I don't take breaks, even though I really like what I'm doing. And also this buffer is to take into account that unexpected things can happen and actually will definitely happen. And that things not always go perfect and we should be ready in advance for this kind of events to prevent them from ruining your plans. And well, if all goes well, lucky you, cause now you have bonus time to relax and do something else. Why be stressed and do everything on the last call when you can be relaxed and actually happy because you got more bonus time? And finally, number eight, just now. 
And finally, everything is about living in the moment and stop focusing on what you can control and instead of what you can do today and now but it is also about appreciating every moment which also means doing things one at a time without multitasking or distractions to maximize its effect like working without messaging on social media or listening to distracting music uh, doing shopping without talking on the phone going to the gym without listening books or podcasts it seems unproductive but it is not because how many times have you tried to do two things at the same time and resulted in doing none of them right or even worse had to spend even more time to repair the mistakes i still multitask sometimes like when i go somewhere i like to listen to books or youtube videos when i wait in line i watch something on instagram or when i do something that doesn't require focusing but when i need to do something in important i just drop everything and focus 100 on that thing i have to admit that i wasn't always like that but after my breakdown i kind of intuitively went on this path because i needed to take more care of my mental state i remember i used to listen to music while working on projects and while messaging on social media yes it was much enjoying but so much tiring in the end and now when i work on something i just don't listen to anything i don't know if this is how it's supposed to be or i still haven't recovered from my mental fatigue but anyway this was just an introduction to essentialism i highly advise you to read the book further because it has hidden tips and tricks and plus it is very motivating when i read it it gave me a vibe of inspiration to be more disciplined and focus only on the essentials guys thanks again for watching till the end i appreciate it so much and i hope that it will make you start to live life more thoughtfully because it's the only one we have in this form i would like to hear from you what concept you would like to implement first into your habits you can leave that in the comments and also subscribe if you want more videos like this love you essentialism essentialism has essentialism Essentialism has been introduced by architecture school really know how to overwhelm people. <laughs> people. They can become more vulnerable. Vulnerable. <laughs>